Sports here on RT. Our top story, Cairo's Tahrir Square, once again packed with people gathered for Friday prayers with a threat of continued violence lingering in the air. Recent clashes have seen more than 40 people killed since Saturday. This is live video you're looking at from the scene where angry protesters have called for military authorities to hand over power to a civilian government. RT's Paula Sleer joins us live now from Cairo. So, Paula, there have been some concessions made by the military rulers, including an apology issued on their Facebook page the other day. But are they doing enough to cool the protesters' anger? Well, the protesters here certainly don't feel that the military is doing enough to meet their demands. As I'm talking to you, the crowds continue to grow, but we're at this moment nowhere near the one million man mark that organizers had hoped for. But it's still early hours, and as we've witnessed over the past week, it's much later in the day that people turn out in huge numbers, and the violence we've seen has often been violence at night. So the situation here still tense and still very unpredictable. I've been walking around the square talking to people. They've all dug today, last chance Friday, but there's a difference, opinion, difference in opinions in terms of how today will pan out. Some of the protesters I've been talking to say that they're very fearful that there will be violence tonight and that the whole situation will descend into anarchy and chaos. But on the other hand, there are just as many protesters I've been talking to who say that they believe that today will mark the end of this whole phase as they term it. These are protesters who plan on Monday to go and vote in the parliamentary elections. They feel that the army should be given a chance. But there is also a group of them a short distance from here who we are hearing are planning a march to Tahrir Square. Now, if indeed these marchers who are pro the military come here and they clash with the majority of people here who are not pro military, we could see violence clashes. The sentiment is also one of anger over reports from human rights groups that the tear gas being used by the security forces has been banned internationally. Not that people here needed human rights groups to tell them this, but this is just confirmation for what people have been believing for the past week. We're also hearing from morgue officials that at least 22 people who were killed were killed by live rounds, with doctors reporting that many of them died from a single bullet wound to the front of the head. And at the same time, we're hearing that a lot of the fire that killed these protesters came from above. So this does seem to suggest that the army and the police are using snipers. So what's been the response so far from external players to this continued wave of violence? Well, we've heard from Washington. They have issued a statement in which they've urged for a quick transfer of power by the military to a civilian government. But other than that, the international community has largely been quiet, which is in stark contrast to how they've been responding to the crisis and the violence in Syria. There, the Arab League has given an ultimatum to Damascus, in which Damascus needs to say that it will agree to some 500 observers coming to that country. They want to look at how the government is dealing with the anti-government protests. Damascus has the deadline for right now, in fact. We're not yet clear on how they will respond. But if indeed they refuse this observer mission, the threat is that they'll be slapped with a whole host of sanctions. And because of this attention being focused on Syria, nowhere near the same kind of attention that's been focused on Egypt, people here are saying that the whole situation is hypocritical and double standards in terms of how the international community is dealing with these two countries. All right, RT's Paulus, they are live for us from the Egyptian capital. Thanks very much for that update.